After 20 years of doing parkour, ow! I really thought I'd seen it all. But that's when I stumbled across Minecraft parkour. I was shocked, because this whole time I thought you couldn't get any nerdier than real life parkour already is. That's the life of parkour civilization. If you want to survive, you have to parkour. I am a parkour god. Oh yeah, I spent a highly questionable amount of precious lifetime researching this strange parkour subculture. And I'm also going to attempt to create a Minecraft parkour video in real life. Zen has uh, upgraded his gear to a hammer. Okay. Before we dive into this rabbit hole together, I just want you to know that I have nothing but love for the Minecraft community. Yes, they are nerds, but that's why I love them. And yes, I'm definitely gonna poke fun at them, but nerds are tough, they can take it. All right, ready? Let's go. When I first heard about Minecraft parkour, my response was, why? Minecraft is all about building stuff. There's no parkour moves in the game. All you can do is simply jump. There's so many better games you could play if you want good parkour action. But I guess there's power in simplicity because it's true that there's a whole community who builds and plays each other's parkour maps. But as I started my investigation, I found that the most popular Minecraft parkour videos are not the ones with the hardest jumps. Instead, what gets millions and millions of views are these relaxing parkour runs that can go anywhere from an hour up to three hours. And they look like this. What kind of weird person watches this for an hour straight? It is kind of beautiful and hypnotizing and I am feeling relaxed the more I watch it. Okay, okay, I get it. This, I love it. It's amazing. It didn't take me long to fall in love with this concept. Why do real life parkour videos always have to be anxiety inducing and high pace? To me, as somebody who does actual parkour, one of my favorite things to do is to go on a walk, put on some chill beats and pretty much meditate as I balance along and do some casual jumps. So an idea was born. Why not shoot a real life one hour long parkour video, but make it super chill. And what's the perfect location for this kind of video? The beautiful iconic rooftops of Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in Paris today with Simon uh, Nogueira. The master of Parisian rooftops and Zen Shimada. The master of artistic parkour <laughs> creations and triple full twists. Today we're gonna go up on the Parisian rooftops with the mission to film a one hour long POV. The hardest part of shooting on a rooftop is getting on a rooftop. Thankfully we have Simone who is literally the key to Paris. Sheesh. How many times have you been on this rooftop we're going to? I've been a few times. Uh, I discovered this one a few years ago. Since I went there a few times yeah, to enjoy the view because we will get, we will get a beautiful view in Notre Dame at the end of the room. We are in for a treat. It's been easy. We just have to go. They don't even have a ladder for us, dude. When I decided that I wanted to shoot a one hour long first person parkour walk, I knew there was going to be a big problem. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yes. You see, usually the best way to shoot a parkour POV video is by either using a mouth mount, or if you look at Zen right here, you can put the GoPro straight into your mouth. Both of those work great for a 15 to 30 second shot, but anything longer than that can result in serious jaw cramps. So I did what every grown up would do in this situation. I asked my mom for help. I had this GoPro head strap flying around and my mom added an extra chin strap to it, making it less bouncy, which means I can now use it for this shot. Yes, it looks ridiculous, but totally got the job done. Thanks mom, love you. Cool. Okay, quick mission brief. Let's not plan it. Do you just walk ahead if that's okay? And then we will follow you. Okay, let's go. It goes without saying that all three of us spent thousands of hours on ground level practicing our moves before we started frolicking across the Parisian rooftops. What's not as obvious and did surprise me is that the Minecraft parkour world is no stranger to hard and repetitive training. This guy even got his own Minecraft parkour personal trainer. 
This is Chu. Hi. And he is absolutely insane. He brought me onto this crazy difficult map and we saw how far I could get. This is the hardest jump in the whole game. It's a uh, four one block jumps. If I mess this up, that's embarrassing. I'll good. So I'll... It gets a bit harder as you go on. In Minecraft, distance is of course measured in blocks. I'm gonna take a minute to explain the basic parkour moves in Minecraft to you. Pay close attention, because this information might save your life one day. The coolest move in Minecraft parkour is, without a doubt, the Neo. I'm gonna have the Minecraft gurus explain the technicalities to you. The name Neo is a reference to the Matrix. Since you jump around the block to make the jump, it's meant to be similar to how Neo dodges bullets. Now, alright, the single Neo, fine. Easy enough. The double Neo, not bad. But the triple Neo? Yeah, I couldn't do it. And the stupidest move is definitely the head hitter. It's called a head hitter jump because you hit your head when you get to the other side. So many people died from it. Watch, it's gonna be like a single head hit. That's all you have to do. Yup, it's a head hitter. Rasplin makes it. I don't know how to do these. I'm, I'm actually dead. RKY misses. You can also do multiple head hitters in a row, which allows you to gather more speed, which then allows you to jump further. We've confirmed that this doesn't work outside of the game. Oh. Minecraft and real life parkour are trying to answer one main question. How far can we jump from one block to the other? And this is one of the furthest roof gaps in parkour history. Oh. IRL, we measure distance using our feet. So the official measurement on size 9 feet. 1, 2, 22. 22. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. In Minecraft, they like to be a bit more specific. This jump technically ranges five blocks, but with the ladder on the last block and the chest on the opposite side, it's possible by exactly 0. 0.00067th of a block. Yeah. Reality and Minecraft have one thing in common. The key for a far jump is a fast run-up. And the weird twitching you can see in this run-up is not because the player is having a seizure, this is a technique called the 45 strafe. The 45 strafe is where you press the strafe key after jumping and snap to 45 degrees, and that actually increases your movement speed by 2.04%. This technique tricks the game by increasing your speed, but it is very difficult. So if I were to run directly straight, I would only miss by 0 0.04 blocks. But if I were to do a 45 degree jump, I would be able to make it. I'm not gonna stay on this topic for too long, but here are just a few more examples so you can see how nerdy Minecraft parkour can get. How Minecraft positioning works is that Minecraft calculates your in-game position once per tick. And since one Minecraft tick is equal to 0 0.05 seconds, Minecraft therefore calculates your position 20 times in a single second. So what blipping allows you to do is land and jump a tick before you actually hit the ground. Now because you are technically jumping before you hit the ground, your Y level is slightly higher. This jump is harder than it looks. The turning is extremely precise. On the jump tick, you have to flick as close to 12.6 degrees as possible, ending up facing almost perfectly straight at 89 degrees. After that, you have to completely stop moving your mouse for 5 more ticks and then flick 45 degrees. The next challenge was when things started to get hard. I had to do a level 5 1BM butterfly neo. If you don't know what it means, then you know it's hard. And to get to this insane level of precision, Minecraft players probably train more serious than parkour athletes. So I made this little parkour thingy which consists of neos, head hitters, four block jumps, elevated four block jumps, and elevated head hitter one block less than four block jump jumps. And yeah, this is only like a fraction of all the jumps, but I feel like these are the most essential. The reason why I'm learning this is because this triple neo chain will give me the muscle memory I need to do neos regularly. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Meanwhile, our mission above the rooftops of Paris took us past some really cool spots. I had never seen a slanted ladder like this and climbing it on the wrong side was really fun. I'm not sure if Simon understood me when I asked him to keep this walk as relaxed as possible or if his sense of reality is just completely warped from spending too much time on rooftops. Either way, the highlight of this walk was a descent onto this windowsill, then shimmying across into a staircase of another building, then climbing up that staircase into the machine room of an elevator to then exit that same room through a tiny window which landed us on a rooftop right across from the famous Cathedral of Notre Dame. And that's how you know Simon has these rooftops mapped out like no one else. Following Simon and Zen without speaking a single word had me enter some sort of meditative state. 
It was strangely enjoyable and I had completely lost track of time, which was also a little bit of a problem because we wanted this walk to be an hour long. And at this point, I had no clue. Had we been here for 10 minutes, an hour? The only way to find out was to walk back and look at the footage. We did the walk. How long did it feel for you? Uh, 50, 40. For you? Yeah, same. Oh, it's yeah. like if we were walking for super, super long. Yeah, oh, sorry, we're standing in the bike lane. Uh, it was 23 minutes to walk. Mm -hmm. It felt so long. It felt Just like I was in like a time bubble. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> We're on our way. There's one more rooftop we're gonna do because we want it to, to have so like. No oh, no video. Okay, I'm just filming my nose. But you, you got beautiful pictures there. No, no. Yes. He's oh. not recording them. He's recording himself. It's my face. Yeah, Look. Mais vous avez de belles photos. Oui. Il faut pas les les plier comme ça. I got in trouble. I always get in trouble. Well, anyway, <laughs> this grumpy Frenchman was a very authentic part of the moment. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> We're gonna go to another rooftop now to get uh, hopefully another 20, 30 minutes. So far it's been good. Like nobody got mad at us. We just had some friendly interactions with local, the locals hanging out at the window. What was your tip if we see a local on the rooftop? What do we do? I uh, said just wave. <laughs> it, uh, it solved all the solution, uh, all the problem. Just wave and smile. Maybe if you're cute like you are, that works. <laughs> like you do. It worked. It worked. Good. Thank you. Just be here. With Simon's help, we managed to get into the building, but the access to the roof was locked. <laughs> so we tried a different exit, which led us into a courtyard. At first, this looked really promising. We could probably climb up onto the roof from here. But upon further inspection, there was no safe way to climb up. At least no way that we could climb up without damaging the building. And that's a big no. We had one more option. We were going to climb down into this other staircase to see if this could lead us up onto the roof. But as we walked up onto the stairs, we heard some noise and realized we were not in a staircase. We were in somebody's house. So we quickly turned around and decided to get out of there as sneakily as possible. Yeah, 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 like a cat. I was struggling. This was such an annoying, inconvenient climb. Can't do this, hey? Eh? I regretted going in there in the first place. Oops, I just ripped this. Things here. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> so bad. And then to make things worse, once I finally got up on top of the roof again, I looked down and Zen had simply opened the door. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Zen is, wins this round. Talking about winning, are there Minecraft parkour competitions? Of course there are, and there's different styles of them too. Most of them, like this wipeout event, are more just for fun, and it's not necessarily about a serious competition, it's more about having a challenge that you can do with a lot of people at the same time. Oh, yeah! Let's go! <laughs> yes! I'm here for you. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! There's more traditional speed competitions, and even side-by-side -side races. Go boys, go! I'm not really sure why this one involved mounting a pig. How'd you put a saddle on him? Oh, you just freaking just, oh God. Again, I'm not against it. Maybe this is something we should try in real life parkour as well. Real life parkour competitions are surprisingly similar to the parallel universe in Minecraft. The only thing I haven't found are freestyle competitions with Minecraft just restricting you to simple jumps. Maybe a 360. Uh, it's probably hard to do in Minecraft. When I tried to find freestyle Minecraft parkour, the only thing I found was this <laughs> amazing freestyle rap, which I'm probably gonna use in the future. Yo, it's Jason and me, and we're parkouring hard. Look how many blocks to go. Boy, that's really far. We're in the air and we're dying sometimes, it's true. Hey man, let's go with you. And on a side note, there's also a mod for Minecraft called Parkool, 
I know. <laughs> Which allows you to do some actual parkour moves in Minecraft. I spent the past couple of months learning how to do parkour, and it's a lot of fun to mess around with. So naturally, this group of friends use this mod to create their own type of competition. Of ultimate tag. If you don't know how it works, pretty much all of us are chasing one player. They have to survive for two minutes. And as you can see, it's taken very seriously. Oh, how did he get up here? Spilling yellow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, boys can't parkour. Oh no. Uh -huh. Catch him. There he is. He's up there. He's over in green. He's over in green. He's ready to run. He's ready to run. Aren't you glad I'm educating you about this important matter? I'm glad you're using your time wisely. He's in yellow. 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 Get him. Get him. Oh, he's running. Green. Oh, no. He's raised. No. I have some criticism, though. The parkour mod gets one thing wrong. All you gotta do is press shift and let go and you will do a cat leap. That is not a cat leap. A cat leap is actually what we also call an arm jump in parkour, and it's basically any jump that has you ending in a hanging position. But as you're about to see, even parkour athletes get these names mixed up, especially if they're from different countries. So mini street challenge on the way. Yeah, take off there, step, step, and an arm jump here. Bonus points if it's one step. <laughs> That was 200 steps. And without, without the arm. Without hands? <laughs> nice. With okay. hand? hands? Congrats. You hand did, I, thought, count, right? I thought you do your, your hands at the end. I, that's what I thought. You say arm jump. Arm jump, yeah. Yeah? So use your arm jump means you use your hands. I know that what? doesn't make sense. Yeah. Really? Arm jump, so the bra. Exactly. Like this is an arm jump. You need to that's an arm jump, yeah. I thought this is arm jump. Uh, that's a precision jump. Yeah, I know that's the uh, name of the landings, that's but it's what about takeoff? Doesn't matter. Arm jump is just a landing. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> Even if I do, <laughs> I've been doing training for seventy years. Oh, yeah, oh, you yeah. lost your uh, vocabulary. Yeah, <laughs> learning something new. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> we win this round, Zen. By the time we made it to the next rooftop, we were faced with a new problem, and this one was bad enough it might completely kill the video it had started raining. And as you can imagine, parkour and slippery surfaces is not a good combination. Oh, that's okay. yeah. Even on ground level, you have to be extra, extra careful doing any sort of jumps. But on the other hand, I was thinking this might actually be a good thing to happen to us because the rain could really add to the relaxed, lo-fi kind of atmosphere of the video that we were going for. Am I really gonna risk my own and my friend's life to make the most authentic Minecraft video possible? Or was this idea completely ridiculous to begin with and we should just quit or at least come back when it's dry? What should I do? While we're taking a moment to make this important decision, I want to tell you about probably, no definitely, the weirdest part of Minecraft parkour, which is parkour civilization. Now this parkour civilization thing almost didn't make it in the video. On one side, it is so weird and funny, it had me laughing the whole time, but on the other side, it's so intricate. The story is almost as deep as the Lord of the Rings or something. So I was scared to even have to try to explain to you guys what it is. But at the end of the day, I said, well, this is a deep dive. And um, that's what you guys are here for, I guess. So it's gonna get weird. Are you ready? So Paco Civilization is not actually a game that you can play. It's more like a Minecraft series that then turned into two full two hour movies. Which, let's look at the views, are probably the most successful parkour movies on YouTube. How did I not know about this? This whole universe had me laughing so much. <laughs> let's get into it. That's the life of parkour civilization. If you want to survive, you have to parkour. Every parkour noob has the same goal, and that's to make it to the top layer where all the parkour pros live. Except most parkour pros are born on the top layer. If you're a parkour noob, there's only one way up, and that is through the Temple of Parkour. The Temple of Parkour is the only structure in the world that combines the bottom layer to the top layer. To make it up, you have to do an impossibly hard parkour course that no parkour noob has ever completed. So this is the main character of the story, Evbo, he starts out as a noob. A noob life is rough. You have to do parkour for food and also you get bullied by the pros. 
Let's go. Open up. It's time for parkour. All right, time for my mandatory parkour check. Let's get this over with. You're late. You know the deal. You can do the one block jump for the raw chicken, or you can attempt the one block vertical jump for the beef. Stop talking. Give me two jumps now. Two jumps in a row? Okay, sorry, sir. I'll do it right now. In parkour civilization, it should be no surprise that all punishments were just more forms of parkour. But there is hope. You can achieve a better life by using your parkour skills as a currency. Since parkour has replaced money. Welcome. Choose which house you want to buy. It's pretty nice. In parkour civilization, all you have to do to buy anything is just make more parkour jumps. Somehow when I was buying my house, I convinced myself to go for the ladder jump to buy the bigger house. In parkour civilization, parkour jumps with trickier items like ladders are worth more. That's why this jump basically bought me a mansion. No way! Thank you for buying the big house. Let me take you right to it. All houses in parkour civilization are pre-built and they all have one thing in common. It's a requirement that every single house has a parkour jump inside to get to your bed. This is a way to make sure everyone in parkour civilization parkours everywhere they go, even inside the house. Now this is a civilization that I can get behind. So at this point I'm thinking, wow, there are so many parallels between real life parkour and Minecraft parkour. How many Minecraft players are out there who would probably love parkour, but they just don't think they can start for whatever reason? Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, myself. This is where I tell you about my online course. Because I was a video game nerd when I started parkour, I know exactly what it feels like to look at all these cool moves and just feel like there's no way I can do them. Now it's my mission to make learning parkour as enjoyable and smooth as it can for you. Especially if you're like me and started from zero, were unfit, don't have a coach, don't have a gym or a local community to support you. If you're curious now, want to get a clearer picture of what learning parkour would look like for you specifically, check out my free parkour roadmap in the description. It's an overview and shows you what it's like to start as a complete beginner. And if you're 100% ready and convinced that parkour is for you and you finally want to give it a go, please click the link to my online beginner parkour course, that was hard to say, in the description. It takes you all the way from zero and walks you through the fundamentals of parkour. So by the end of it, you'll be able to overcome all kinds of obstacles effortlessly. The point is, I want all my fellow gamers out there to know that you can learn. It's never too late. Go for it and Take it step by step. It's gonna be so fun and you have no idea how good you can get before you try. At least that was my experience. All right, sponsor message over. Back to non-sponsored Jason. Uh, where was I again? All right, parkour civilization. Of course, I was wondering what's below the noob level. If you fall into the void, you end up in parkour prison, which just means more parkour. Down here in parkour prison, even the cells have one block jumps. If you miss a single jump, or if a parkour pro catches you not jumping for 30 seconds, you'll be thrown into the lava. All right, I gotta ask, do you wanna do a diagonal jump to reduce your prison sentence time? In this epic journey, the main character Evbo has a few special tricks that allow him to make his way up in the world. I have to do a 360? Have I even done this before? Whatever, I'm just gonna go for it. Please make it. <gasps> No way, I actually did it. I'm not gonna lie. That was the coolest thing I've seen a parkour noob do. Well, the deal's a deal. Here you go. I'm skipping some major plot points and character development that's part of this four hour epic, but all you gotta know is that Evbo makes it to the pro society. I was the first noob in history to ever complete this course. No one at the bottom level knows what society is like up here, and I was gonna be the first one to figure it out. What was it gonna be like? Which means he gets new shoes and, well, let me tell you, the Minecraft pro lifestyle is pretty much what being a parkour pro is like in real life. And that's my segue. In the real world, we made a decision after talking to Simon. When I asked Simon about the slipperiness on the rooftops, he said that the Parisian rooftops are actually more slippery when it's dry. And that's because there's a thin layer of dust on all of the metal. And as soon as it starts raining, that dust combined with the water gets a little bit more sticky. So at times you actually have more grip. Okay, silver is slippery. Silver is slippery. So we decided to go for it, and boy, was it worth it. I mean, even just being out in the rain and not worrying about getting wet, when's the last time you actually did that and were able to enjoy just that feeling of being in the moment? 
Think about that and that will just give you a little bit of an idea of what it felt like to roam across the Parisian rooftops with these two guys. Some of my favorite moments of this walk were the rooftop gardens and also how the three of us started developing a bit of our own choreography. You see a lot of times there are moments like this where we can go the same way by taking different routes. Simon climbed the outside of the ladder, Zen went in the inside and then I went all the way around. The sketchiest part of the climb was definitely this crumbling wall. We had to be really careful not to pull it down with us when we were climbing up. And at the midpoint of this walk, we made it to this incredible lookout point. It really was like something out of Assassin's Creed. And I did feel like I was in a video game. Having my friends around made me feel like I'm in some sort of Final Fantasy mission or something. <laughs> and we're just making our way across this alien land. Being quite exposed here for a while, we were spotted by the locals from some windows and from the street and followed Simon's tactic of just smiling and waving, which uh, worked pretty well. All they wanted was to know what Simon's Instagram account is. Sorry. <laughs> He's for oh, there's someone over there. Turns out we were not the only people going for a rooftop walk today. Shh, looks so cool. I hope this will look as good on camera, but it's pretty epic in real life. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> this is like a <laughs> dumb and dumber. <laughs> Stan and Ollie kind of kind of scene right now with you two. I actually got a cut in this hand at some point. I think it stopped bleeding already. And a little cut somewhere else, but I think it's okay. <laughs> Some sharp edges around. After reviewing the footage, I realized quickly that we were not done with our adventure yet. We had recorded 40 minutes of rooftop exploration, which meant we wanted at least 20 more minutes to hit the one hour mark for our Minecraft parkour video. While we are replenishing our health bar in the real world, let's check back on the pro parkour lifestyle in Minecraft. Hey, parkour delivery. Let's go, my parkour delivery is here. Now that I'm a parkour pro, I can get parkour delivered to my house. Hey, did you order parkour construction to this house? Yes, sir, that's me. I ordered the uh, six block tall slime jump to my bedroom. I think this would be a good place for it. You think you can build it right there? Oh, sure. I can make that happen. To think just a few days ago I was a parkour noob and now I'm getting custom parkour jumps installed in my house is crazy. This look good? Yep. You got my payment? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. It was four one blocks in a row, right? Okay, one, two, three, four. There you go. Thank you very much. And my tip? Your tip? Really? Don't tell me you thought you weren't going to tip me. If you're a parkour pro, it's always expected that you tip when you buy something. Oh, I hope I make this. Oh, that was close. Oh, wow. A 360? Yeah, you're good, man. Thanks. And like most things in parkour civilization, the way you tip is with more parkour. But just like in the real world, once you become a parkour pro, you look up and realize you still haven't made it to the top. My neighbor started telling me everything there was to know about parkour civilization. He brought me back to the parkour temple where all the statues were. He explained how parkour civilization starts at the noob level, and at level 2, you become a parkour pro. Then, there were the parkour masters. If you were lucky enough to rank up, you get gold boots and you become a master. My neighbor said that parkour masters never come down to the pro level, but if they do ever come down, it's a parkour pro's nightmare. He said the parkour masters are ruthless. And then he walked over to the largest statue, the one with the diamond boots. He said that this was the parkour champion. He said that most people down here don't even believe that the champion is real, but the stories say there can only be one parkour champion. Whoever that was lives at the top of parkour civilization, which means if I was going to make it to the top, I would have to become a parkour champion. My first day as a parkour pro was strange. There was a dispenser at the end of the structure. When it was my turn, I clicked the button and I got a piece of steak. So this is how the parkour pros get food. Then I received the piece of paper. The paper said farm work equals 15 minutes. And this is when I realized how life was different on the pro level of parkour civilization. Instead of parkouring for food like the noobs do, the pros parkour for work. Just like the guy who sold me my house 
house, the guards in parkour prison, or even the pros that fed me every day. They were all just completing their daily task that they got from this piece of paper. And now for my first daily task, I was assigned to work on the farm. Before this, I had never seen an animal in parkour civilization, but this is the place they were all kept. And it should be no surprise that in parkour civilization, even the animals had to do a parkour course. <laughs> of course they do. It just makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Oh man, this job is terrible. Now I'm just gonna have to watch a cow fall off and die. Whoa, what the? Oh my god, this cow is cooking. How did he even do that? The parkour pros only eat the meat from the animals that complete the parkour course. They say it enhances your parkour abilities. This is actually true. I wanted to keep it a secret, but now that the Minecraft parkour world leaked it, I might as well show you my parkour cows. Hey Frank, you want a brush? Yeah. This is all I eat. Hello, sorry. You want a brush too? All right, follow me this way to the parkour course, girls. Come on. Yep. As for the other animals that don't make the course, well, that's where the meat comes from on the noob level. I know I'm making fun of this, but we gotta respect the detail in world building here. Like, everybody has a job, everything's accounted for, there's a whole food supply network. Hear me out. We could pull this off if we wanted to. Nothing's stopping us from living in a parkour society. So if all we want to do in this parkour society is parkour, why do we work? Well, if we work, we get a ticket which gives us access to the training ground, which is an area where, you guessed it, we can train more parkour. But all the jumps here are in a safe environment, so we can use the skills we learn here to take it up to the next level. And at first, this sounded so weird to me. Like, why would you do parkour just to then be able to do more parkour? When I realized, I myself have done parkour commercials and then used the money I earned from that commercials to pay entry into a parkour gym. Which sounds like the same thing to me. Why don't we skip the whole thing and let people pay with parkour to get into parkour gyms, please? It's so funny, I just realized wanting to become a pro athlete literally means you just want to use your parkour to pay for things. The Minecraft situation sounds so silly, but I'm trying to do exactly the same thing. <laughs> anyway, practice in Minecraft civilization is extremely important because at any time, you might find yourself in a parkour battle. And exactly that happens to our main character when one of the parkour masters surprisingly makes a visit. In parkour civilization, it should be no surprise that people fight each other with more parkour. If someone attacks you with a jump and you don't make it, you pay the price. <laughs> Our main character wins the battle with a 360. No surprise. I think I found his weakness. He couldn't do a 360. All right, you ready for a three block jump with a 360? No, stop. I yield. Somehow I beat a parkour master. Against all odds, a hero Evbo prevails, makes it to the next stage, and graduates to a parkour master. I did it. I I actually did it. I jumped through the dispensers and I was equipped with golden boots. Now I get to be the first parkour pro to see what society is like up here. Oh my. This is what parkour civilization looks like as a master. Up here, only the best of the best can survive all of the jumps. Everywhere I look is a three block jump. Except now up here, there are parkour highways. At this point while watching this, I'm getting a little bit mad because this film is literally revealing all our best kept parkour secrets. Did you ever wonder why parkour athletes can jump from impossible heights without any fall damage? Well, this is it. And way up high, I saw a parkour master easily making the jumps. And just when I thought he was gonna die from fall damage, he just caught himself with a water bucket and moved on. I've never heard of water bucket parkour being a thing. Parkour masters can use water to never take fall damage? Apart from this, there's one major difference once you become a master. And that is that you now have to build your own jumps. You have to build your jump, buddy. Let's go. Yeah, why am I doing this? Whatever, I'm just gonna go for it. One, two. Oh. I've never even seen a 360, but you just paid me with two in a row. This is incredible. Let me show you to your parkour skyscraper. If there's one thing I know about life in parkour civilization, it's that a 360 can solve everything. Wouldn't it be nice if it was that easy? I'm telling you guys these, these Minecraft people have it all figured out. It's time for us to tear down society as we know it and rebuild it in the image of the true parkour gods. Who's with me? Ow. 
The downside about being a parkour master is every jump in my life is now so much harder. The houses up here had so many more spaces to fall through. Parkour masters are never supposed to fall, no matter how hard the jump is. Dom, did you hear that? I think we missed that memo. Here in parkour civilization, masters should never be seen doing one block jumps. If you're caught, you will basically become a laughing stock in parkour city. Now this is a bit embarrassing. Back in the real world on the rooftops of Paris, we completely forgot to bring our water buckets as we're ascending onto our last rooftop of the day. You'll notice a lot more graffiti up on this rooftop because the entrance to it is more well known and a little bit easier. Basically, that's a telltale sign if you want to know if it's easy or hard to get up onto a rooftop, you can always have an eye out for graffiti. That's usually a pretty good sign that there is or is not an entrance. Some of the highlights of this walk for me were the hidden messages and also the sun coming out. We managed to get a rainbow at the end of the video. It was barely visible on camera, but it was magical wow. for us. And in the end, I couldn't have been luckier with the weather. It was so cool for this one hour video to start overcast, then go into the rain and finish it with some blue in the sky. Going wow. into this video, I had no idea if this was gonna turn out awesome or if this was just a terrible idea and wouldn't work. Starting with the DIY rig to not knowing the route and just not knowing if anybody would be into watching a video like this. But at the end of the day, I already knew it was worth it because it was such an exciting, fun, meditative experience all in one, just personally for myself. And I'm thankful for the Minecraft parkour community because without the inspiration, I would have never went on this adventure and it was something that was truly special and a dream come true. So thank you Minecraft parkour for giving me this excuse to do something that I didn't know I would love so much. Cool, I think we have an hour in total. That was good fun. Now we're in this crazy, look at this building, man. We did not plan our exit. <laughs> How stable is this floor, do you think? A bit uh, not super trustable. Not that trustworthy. Should we just climb back out, or do you really want to walk around this? Look at, it. Look at these old, like, nails. Ah, bird. Sorry. I won't touch your nail ever again. The ah, fuck, never look up. Dust in my eye. <sighs> bird poop, maybe bird poop. Zen has uh, upgraded his gear to a hammer. Okay. Oh my god, old school wallpaper. I don't know if you can see that with this light, but. Oh, I love it. Okay, this is another After round. we had made it across the rooftop for an hour without breaking anything or leaving any trace behind, I was almost gonna ruin this whole thing. But to my defense, why did Simon start doing this ridiculous climb when we had a perfectly no way. easy way to get out of that rooftop? You see that metal thing on the ledge that Simon is moving out of the way? Well, I was so focused on the climb that I didn't even see that at all. And then when I finally get to the point in the ledge where I feel safe, Okay, that's not that bad. Simon, I think, spots someone in the hallway and tells me to just hang out there. <laughs> I did not really feel that comfortable, so I kept on climbing and watched me almost knock that metal piece off the roof. Okay, thank you. Wow, I did not think about that. Perfect. I think that's a good reminder that no matter how experienced you are, you can only stay really focused for so long. And after an hour on a rooftop, I was pretty happy to have solid ground under my feet again. Meanwhile, Minecraft parkour is asking the real questions. Why else would people parkour if it wasn't for money or social status? So it was all just a lie? Oh man, are we really gonna wrap up this story arc? Let's do it. Evbo, our main character, finds out there's a huge conspiracy going on behind this parkour universe. It's not about fair, it's about order. If you can't parkour, you deserve to be at the bottom. And the only way he can stop it is by making it all the way to the top. He battles the parkour champion. <laughs> all of this parkour just to die by the champion. Let's do this. Flower pot jump to chain, chain to backwards jump to 360 fence jump, diagonal chain jump to the candle. I. I did it. But despite his best efforts, he's not good enough and he loses to the champion. The five block jump. It's not possible. It's just not. I lost and I won't be the one to save parkour civilization.
the parkour god? But you were just a myth. Is this all of your doing? The parkour civilization I created was never intended to divide people, but the new champion had different plans. And you, you wanted me to stop the champion, and I couldn't. I'm sorry. A main character has this whole Spider-Man moment where he doesn't want to be a hero anymore, he'll just live a normal life as a noob, but no. We're not done yet, Evo makes it back to the top. He battles the champion once again in a Neo face-off. Haha, <laughs> you know what those are now. Told you this information might save your life one day. Aren't you glad you paid attention? Good job. <sighs> Parkour God, if you're watching me, please just give me the strength for one last jump. <laughs> I didn't expect my feet to hit the ground again, but they did. And when I turned around, the parkour champion had fallen. I I won. I actually won. It's over, right? I'm the new parkour Evo champion. Evo wins. He is the new champion, and he can make the rules in parkour civilization now. I'm not just going to make things go back to the way they were. I'm going to make things better than they ever were. But of course, a true rise to power story is not perfect if the hero just takes the power. It has to be given to him. I'm supposed to be the one who can make the rules and save everyone. So how do I do that? So Evbo refuses the power. There was this whole side character who was the old champion who lost his power. And Evbo attempts to give the power back to the old wise man becoming the true archetype of a hero who deserves the power, but gives it up. I think you should be the champion. I don't know what to do with parkour civilization, but you, you were the champion. You know how to fix things. I just don't think I'm ready to be the- Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Evbo, you think all of this was for me to become the champion again? I'm old, and you know parkour civilization better than I ever could. Ah, <sighs> well. However, the people want Evbo to be the champion of Parkour City because he's proven his worth, so he's handed the power back, making him the perfect hero. And this is the end of the first movie. I'll be honest, I didn't watch the whole second movie, but I did watch the very end of it, which has a super epic, cool, animated parkour sequence, which I just need to show you. From the beginning, I've always had to jump to survive, and well, I'm still jumping. But wait, before this final epic scene, there's something I want to say. Thank you, Minecraft community, for taking parkour and in your own wonderful way, making it part of your universe. It was so inspiring and enjoyable to dive into your guys' world. And by all the parallels between real parkour and Minecraft parkour, I can tell there is somewhat of a shared spirit between us. I can just hope that this video might be the start of our worlds colliding a little bit more in the future. I don't know how that's going to work, but maybe that can happen. Please leave me a comment if you're a Minecraft player or leave me a comment if you do parkour. I'm curious if I'm reaching just one or maybe even both of the communities with this video. All right, that's it. Now we're ready. The final epic scene. Let's go. Oh, how did I just do that? Did the parkour god just put the ladder here for me? Oh, I am still alive. I am still alive. How is this possible? Wait, netherite boots? No, I'm the one who made the ladder. What? That's impossible. <laughs> no, it is definitely possible. Now, let's see how this works. All right, just places I go. <laughs> this is what parkour should feel like. Okay, what do we have here? I think I can build all that. I can see the finish line. I'm not giving up now. Come on, just five more jumps. Let's do this. Oh, oh it's over. Oh my gosh, it's over. Oh, that one really came down to the wire. I kind of wish someone saw that 360 at the end. That was kind of cool. Oh, my body is sore. My shoulder kind of hurts. A little shoulder. I think I dislocated my shoulder or something. But I'm okay. Okay. Should it be hurting? I thought I'm the parkour god now. I feel like I shouldn't be able to feel pain. Can I even die? Should I test it out right now? No, no, that's a terrible idea. I should not test that out.